What's up affordable armory folks? How y'all doing? So for a long time now, I've wanted to get a Canik for the channel um, and I just haven't gotten around to buying one. They seem like good guns. They're, um, they're a nice alternative to Glock or SIG or whatever, M&P, etc. Uh, and they're pretty readily available. I mean, they even sell the magazines at my local gun shop, which is pretty cool. Um, so I didn't buy one, but a guy I met at the range loaned me one. So I've got the Canik uh, TP9 SF Elite Subcompact. So let's head over to the workbench and we'll unbox it, show you what it comes with, and then we'll head to the range and shoot it. Okay, here we are at the workbench. I'm gonna open this up. Nice hard shell case that comes with the gun. Uh, open it up this way. We got a piece of foam here in the top half. Uh, looks like this was probably just wrapped around the trigger guard. You've got some paperwork. So, got a nice color manual here. Uh, well, maybe not color black and white but it's uh, it's color on the front anyway um, so there's your manual you've got registration card you got your youth handgun safety notice um, a warning about assembly you've also got a cleaning brush and a cleaning rod it's included we'll flip it over to the fun part so, uh, looks like a uh, lock. Yep, there's your. It uh, looks like a trigger lock instead of your standard uh, thread through lock that most guns come with nowadays. This, I believe, is your uh, screws and stuff for the optics mount, which I'll get into here in a minute. Uh, so it's pretty cool that they include that. Looks like there's some Allen keys in there. Um, you've got a chamber plug. You've got a 15 round magazine with this uh, base pad there. So we'll get into that here in a second as well. Set that to the side. You've got uh, an extra back strap here. If I can get that out. There you go. There's the back strap. And then here. You have a mounting plate, which this is made out of plastic, so I don't know how good that is. Look at that, I mean, I can bend it. <laughs> um, but it's got a mounting plate. We'll get into that here in a second as well. And you've got either a round that he fired, or maybe this is the test fire round from the factory. Um, you got a pretty decent holster here. Um, you know, it's uh, set up for inside the waistband at the moment. I believe it can also be an outside the waistband, but um, this is a different style holster than what most Canics have been coming with. They typically come with uh, more of a, uh, a Serpa style holster, which is okay, but it's outside the waistband and it's kind of bulky. And, um, you know, some people don't like the retention system on them, but um, from what I'm seen this holster will work with any canic not just the subcompact so that's kind of cool and it's nice that like i said it's inside the waistband and it's kydex so it's a nice hard shell looks like you got a, a retention screw on there so if you want to tighten it up you can but there you go there's the holster and uh finally we got the gun the tp9 elite subcompact first off you've got this is a 12 round magazine and uh, there you go you've got a little bit of a pinky extension there so you can see with the 12 round magazine I am able to wrap my fingers around it no problem um, then you've also got like I said the 15 round magazine again with an extension on it and uh, you can get a full purchase on it that way um, I kind of wish that it extended all the way out to here because now you have this awkward gap in your in your grip like where it's sitting in your palm but when you put your other hand there that's not such a big deal um, not as noticeable at least 
Uh, we'll see when we're shooting it how that works out. But it's got some pretty nice features on it. The uh, texturing here on the side is nice and sandpapery, and then you've got kind of a blocky style texture on the front and back. Uh, this is probably close to like the CZ or FN style of blocky, maybe not quite as blocky but it's definitely more than what's on say a Glock for example uh, and then this texturing on the side is uh, pretty nice actually it's just enough to where I can feel that it's there um, you know it's I mean it feels like a very very fine sandpaper so not very rough at all uh, as far as controls go you've got your slide stop lever here which is on both sides and so there's that there you can see if you wanted to you could do it left-handed you've got this takedown lever here which is nice it's um, press the trigger there you go slide comes off maybe there you go it goes just forward and then up and it's off so as far as inside the gun uh, looks pretty standard see on the inside of the slide here there is your safety um, got your barrel blah 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 uh, nothing too fancy here man this gun is either dirty or he put a lot of lube on it one or the other um, I'm gonna go with it's dirty but uh, there you go it's two uh, two piece spring there so for your recoil spring guide rod assembly so we'll put this thing back together real quick so it doesn't go on the front and slide all the way back like uh, most of your guns do because this if you'll see does not does not work the uh, see how the ejector is uh, catching right there so what you got to do is you actually set it down like that see now it's sitting where it's supposed to and then from there push it to the rear and you're good to go all right so you've got uh, a white dot front sight and then you've got a blackout notched rear that's serrated it's kind of, that's a uh, nice feature it's serrated and squared off so if you want to do your one-handed manipulations you can um, it's got uh, front serrations on the slide nice rear serrations here so uh, manipulating the slide shouldn't be a problem you got two Picatinny rail slots um, you got a uh, uh, sandpapery texture there where your front thumb where your front thumb goes um, you got made in Turkey on the other side, so there's no texturing there, but it is the same like oval slot. Um, and then, so on the top here, you've got a, um, a cover plate here. You take those two screws off, uh, put this in its place, and then you can mount an optic to it. Uh, this is not fit for an RMR though, or any of your mainstream optics. I believe it is the size of the uh, shield RMSC and then I think there's a couple new optics that just came out like the SIG Romeo Zero that will probably fit this uh, and Hollow Sun maybe they just announced a new one I, th I think it's the 507K is designed for the smaller guns like this um, but I'm not 100% on that so uh, do a little bit of research and find out for sure but um, I know that the RMSC does fit this, and then I'm pretty sure that the Romeo Zero fits it as well as the new Holosun 507K. So, also at Shot Show, they just announced a couple new versions of this. They're selling one that comes with an optic already mounted to it, and uh, the other version is an all black version. As you can see, this is kind of a two tone going on. It's got like a dark gray color and then a black for the frame uh, but they made an all-black version so uh, the trigger 
There's your take up right there. Nice easy take up. It's a bladed trigger just like a Glock. Um, but from what I can tell right there, that's a lot smoother than a Glock. Uh, I mean, there's no grit or whatsoever in that take up. And then there's your brake. Let's reset that press. There's a little bit of slack right there between so that's where you hit a wall and then it moves just a little bit and then breaks. So that's that's uh, actually a little bit misleading because um, you, you think you think you're at the wall right there and then you're not and then it moves a little bit more. So there your first wall, second wall and then break. So. That's pretty much it for the unboxing. Now let's go to the range and uh, see how it shoots. All right, one last thing I just thought of uh, before I head off to the range. So I mentioned, I think I mentioned at least, um, that this is your like Glock 26 size gun. Um, but it does hold 12 rounds um, instead of 10. And so I thought, well, why not compare it with the P320 subcompact because it is also your Glock 26 competitor and uh, it holds 12 rounds as well even though there it is 12 rounds so I uh, just thought you know for size comparison let's put them side by side there you go you can see uh, lengthwise they're about the same but the trigger guard on the Canik extends just a little bit further. Barrel length is the same. Now if you put them one on top of the other here, then you'll see what I'm talking about with that trigger guard there. And you also notice that this has a squared off trigger guard and there's a lot more room in, in the front. Uh, so if you're wearing gloves when you're shooting, that's nice. And then also if you wanna do the the finger on the front thing that some people like to do. It's probably easier with this gun. And you'll also notice that with the uh, 320 subcompact, you do not get rails, whereas you do on this gun. So uh, as far as thickness goes, um, looks like you're a little bit thicker on the Canik. Not by much, but it is thicker. Um, there you go, you can kind of see it now how the Canik is just a hair thicker on either side. Um, height wise, you know, that's okay. So if I put slide to slide, the SIG is just a little bit taller. Um, so your bore axis is probably, I don't know, it's probably about equal, honestly. If you look at it, um, it looks like the SIG is uh, higher in the hand, but that's just because this one has a beaver tail, whereas uh, the Canik does not. Um, so anyway, just thought that'd be an interesting comparison, you know, to uh, 12 round guns. And one more just for the heck of it, because uh, I don't know, this is the most popular gun on my channel. So the Taurus G2C which still does not have sights as you can see, but um, whenever I get those in, I'll do an update. So, this is also a 12 round gun, um, difference being that it has a safety and uh, the Canik does not, but they're both striker fired subcompact-ish guns. Um, so, you can see size-wise, the the Canik is longer as far as the slide. Um, there you go. So you got rear of slide to, to rear of slide. The Canik is longer, but they're roughly the same height. I think the Taurus is maybe just a little bit taller. Um, so size comparison there for you. And then thickness. The Canik is definitely thicker. So this is a bit smaller gun um, than the Canik is. 
Um, I would put. I would honestly say that the Canik is closer to a mid-sized gun. It's it's kind of right in between your Glock 19 and Glock 26. It's smaller than a Glock 19, but bigger than your subcompacts, as you can see from what I've just shown you. These are both, you know, that's the P320 subcompact, and the Taurus G2C would be your, you know, compact, subcompact style gun, and this is bigger than both, as I just showed. So keep that in mind, just for uh, size comparison's sake. All right, we're here at the range. I've got the Canik TP9 SF Elite subcompact, and we're gonna shoot it. Got uh, some 124 grain Federal. I've got some 147 grain Remington, and then I've got some bulk stuff. It was uh, 115 grain, I believe, Federal. So. Let's shoot it. All right, we'll start with the uh, 12 round magazine.
All right, guys, uh, here is the target. Uh, I couldn't film it at the range because there were other people there. It was loud, and you probably wouldn't have been able to hear me talking. So this is the first 50 rounds. That was 115 grain, um, I want to say American Eagle. Uh, this was the next 50 rounds. That was 124 grain, um, also American Eagle. Yeah. 124 grain American Eagle and that looks like the best group uh, These are all really good groups, but that was the, well. I take that back. We'll get to that here in just a second uh, This was the 147 grain and that was Remington um, I Gotta say the recoil on the 147 grain was a little weird. It was almost like shooting 45 ACP the slide felt really sluggish um, and I mean that's gonna happen because that's meant for shooting uh, suppressed so uh, it, as you can see the grouping was a little bit higher uh, and getting used to that recoil impulse I kind of threw some rounds here and there but eventually I did settle in on a group and then last but not least was some more 115 grain I believe this was federal uh, and that is absolutely the best group because look at that um, I threw a couple because I was shooting the 147 grain right before that and then uh, once I dialed it in you can see I really dialed it in that was an absolutely fantastic group so uh, good job Canik this gun shoots really good especially for the size of pistol that it is there you go there's uh, 200 rounds through the Canik TP9 SF Elite subcompact alright so there you have it um, the Canik TP9 SF Elite Subcompact shoots pretty good. Um, I like it. I would buy one. This is not my gun, like I said, but uh, yeah, I can recommend it. If, if you're looking at this gun, go ahead and get you one. It shoots great. Uh, it has a lot of features, comes with a holster. You know, why not? Uh, the only thing is that one issue where the slide was not locking to the rear with this magazine, the flush fit magazine. So aside from that, it shoots great. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Head over to affordable-armory.com. That's where the blog lives. That's where our merch is. That's where all of our affiliate links are. And you can find all of our social media outlets there. So everything's all in one place, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.